One basic question that I'm frequently asked is about document resolution. How big should your canvas be? Well, in this video, I'm going to take a few minutes to tackle this issue and take a look at this dialog right here, the new document. First off, you need to know that there's a direct relationship between canvas size and file size. The more pixels you have, the bigger your file is going to be. Also, there's a relationship between file size and computer happiness. If you've got a really big file, your brushes are going to move slowly and the computer is just going to chug. So this is what we're trying to avoid. Now you can think about file size calculation a little bit like calculating volume. You've got three axes to work with. There's the height of the document, the width of the document, and the number of layers in the layer stack. All of these add to the file size. They're sort of multiplied together. So even if you have a small height and a small width, if you have, say, 150 layers, you're going to end up having a gigantic file. So knowing that a bigger file size means a slower computer and just not a good painting experience, I argue that starting with small resolution is actually to your benefit. Now, a lot of artists will disagree with me on this point, but stick with me, and I'll explain my idea. Common wisdom says that you just don't enlarge images on the computer. It's lossy. It's bad practice. So for instance, with this photo, if I were to go to image, image size, and take it from its 800 pixel width that it's at right now and make it twice as big, I'll say 1600 pixels wide. If I do that, it gets blurry. It has to invent pixels, and in doing so, it strays from what the original lens captured onto the sensor. So that's bad practice. But that's really for photography. I think with painting, it's a little bit different. So my general process begins small. I like the speed that a small canvas will give me because my computer is totally unburdened. So I can block in my first strokes, big and quick, and there's no slowdown. And at some point, I'll have filled my whole canvas. And this is sort of the first pass of the image. It was quick, usually very loose, and it had a certain liveliness to it. But once I've gotten this far, it's going to be time to refine. So this is when I will increase the image size. So if it's 800 now, I'll double it to 1600 pixels wide. All right, so now I've got a, a lot more canvas to work with, and I can zoom in further. This is when I begin to refine. Now that I've filled my canvas with the large, fast strokes, I'll be working towards slower, more precise strokes as I refine the image. And depending on what you're working towards, maybe a finished illustration that gets printed, you'll continue this upscaling process to maybe four or even 5,000 pixels wide. And at this point, those original strokes that you made on the block-in round will have a certain blurriness to them. But that's okay, because what that gives you is this nice selective focus. You'll be working carefully on all the close, detailed areas. These are the focal points of the image. But the areas that you don't need the viewer to focus on, the rest of the image, will have a nice sort of loose construction quality to it. Sort of like an oil painting where certain areas are left a little bit unfinished. I find that the upscaling process really facilitates this look. So I know at this point you might be thinking, well wait, this is the exact opposite of what I've been taught. And that might be true. There are certain situations where this just does not work. For instance, if you've got technical line drawings or maybe a um, comic book page that you're coloring, you want to keep that as high resolution as possible from the beginning. But if you're just working with paint, this upscaling process can be really nice. And also, it's a lot easier on your computer. So if this is anything that you've done personally in your painting, let's hear about it in the comments. Or, if you have a strong opposition to this idea, I'd like to hear that as well. And as usual, I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. So if you've got some interesting questions that you'd like answered, put them in the comments, and they might turn into one of the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.